Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, Lake Diamonds. We are back. This is going to be a fun one. Got my main man, Mark. Mark Goodson. He is the guy behind the scenes that is doing all of our buying. He is the most knowledgeable dude I have ever met when it comes to tackle. And one of his favorite things happens to be reels. So in this episode, we're going to talk all about the new inshore spinning reels. There's been a ton of questions. You guys have seen some new names from Shimano, from, from Penn, from Daiwa, really from everybody. Uh, and even, even Quantum's working on some new stuff. And there's been a lot of confusion. All right, is, is this replacing this? Like what happened to the CI4? What's this, this new thing? What do they fix on it? And uh, so we'll talk a little about what happened in ICAST because that was kind of the first we heard about it. Now we're starting getting some of these reels in. We're able to test some of them and, and really kind of put them to the test, if you will, and see what, you know, what all the, all the hoopla is about. So first and foremost, welcome to the show, Brother Mark. Yeah, I, I need like a like diamonds for my name. You know, I, I need that pizzazz, you know. So I, I got to think of something that uh, goes with Mark. Well, you were lucky that you were blessed with an easy, no one really messes up Goodson, or do they? Do they screw that up? No, no, pretty bland. Oh, well, there are many days, junior high, you know, and, uh, you know, you don't really want to have to speak up. And the teacher always said Simmons, which is why that came about. So I, yeah, I got called Simmons nice. my entire life. Um, probably very like nice. a lot of the confusion with these spinning reels. So what, like, what, take us back to ICAST. It was like the first virtual ICAST, which was different. But what, what's, what's like the overall change that all these manufacturers are going toward? And then we're going to hit each brand and talk about uh, what they're actual changing specifically, what these new models are all about, et cetera. Yeah, I think the biggest change from ICAST, what I've seen, you know, most of the manufacturers doing is they're, they're still trying to push the limits of building the lightest, the strongest, the fastest, you know, to incorporate these, these really unique materials in their product. Um, and, and ICAST was kind of the coming out party to a lot of these concepts. You know, it seemed like Daiwa and Shimano, uh, they really hit it out of the park, you know, for, for this year's available product that'll hit the market in November, December. Um, but it just seems like everyone is saying, okay, what are we good at? You know, what, when someone mentions quantum, what do people think? You know, what's that, what's that one reel? And, and what they're doing is they're taking what they're really, really good at, refining it, making it better. Um, and, and then they say, okay, what does our audience want in a different reel? You know, is it a price point issue? Is it they like certain things on this? They don't like certain things on that. Um, and, and I think that this year the, the manufacturers really paid a lot of attention to that. So you mentioned like, what do people think about quantum and stuff? So what was like, did they, you, you and you also mentioned Shimano and Diag kind of knocked out of the park. What, in what way, what did, uh, what were the new things? Well, so for instance, Shimano, and, I, and I'll just address that because, you know, they're one of the most popular on, you know, in the industry. Uh, Shimano did a lot of, a lot of changes this year, you know, from a mental aspect to a physical aspect, the mental side, which I'll go into, you know, in, in the future as well. But, you know, they, they said, okay, what is hurting the Stratic market? Because the Stratic is their number one, that by far everyone knows Stratic is Shimano's, you know, it's, it's the, the real to have. They said, okay, we have two really competing prices in the Stratic lineup, the CI4 plus, and the standard Stratic. And, and what really is the difference between the two? Is it just the body material that it's made out of? Are there true internal components that make the CI4 better than the traditional? So what Shimano decided to do at ICAST is said, we have two reels that are you know real close together and we don't like that anymore because we feel that the Stratic CI4 plus is really taking away market share of the standard Stratic and, and we, we need to create that level of difference. And that's what Shimano did on the mental aspect is they say, okay, no more CI4 plus. I'm gonna call it something completely different. I want CI4 plus out of your mouth, out of your mind. 
and now it's going to be called Vanford. And I want two reels that are now will stand on its own platform. And now they can talk about two very distinctly different products. Hmm. All right. So let's keep, let's stay on this topic then. So CI4 as of next year is going away. It sounds like. Correct. Okay. Correct. And so that's going to be the Vanford. CI4. That's right. Similar so price that 230 ish, something like that. 250. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 225 to 245 market is going to be in that platform for the Vanford. Um, it, it went up, I mean, barely in price, but in my opinion, a lot of the things that they did with the Vanford, it now is that real that Shimano needed it to be in the CI four plus. So, you know, the Vanford, and, and I'll just, I'll go into some of the, yeah. the changes, you know, be, between the, the Vanford and the old CI4 Plus, you know, you still have that lightweight framing that, that CI4, you know, really brought to the, to the industry. So that, that six, six and a half ounce range of reel is being continued into the Vanford market. Um, what Shimano did about three to five years ago on the, and, and I'm, I'm going to hold up a, a dial for right now, just so I can explain it to you on the rotor assembly. So this spinning apparatus is what they call the rotor on the Vanford and CI four plus what they did three to five years ago was, is they found a way to perimeter weight this rotor. And what I mean by that is as that rotor is oscillating around that spool, they've weighted the rotor to balance that wobble, the vibration, the noise on their product. So that's why whenever you spin a Shimano product, it's just really, really fluid. You don't feel a lot of the real moving in your hand because of how they weight the rotor. So one of the big things that they did with the Vanford is they kept that same kind of apparatus on their rotor. They, they did it in an MGL. So it's a, it's a carbon fiber based rotor to reduce weight. Um, so that's how they're keeping it in that six and a half ounce platform. But two of the major changes that they made, something that Shimano just absolutely had a hard, hard time with was a bearing issue. I don't care if you ask 10,000 people how great Shimano is, and they are great. 900 you know, percent of them will say it's a bearing. You know, it's a roller bearing. It makes this just god awful noise when the line's peeling off the reel. It's just a loud reel when the bearings go bad. So the Vanford and the new Stratic, they started to incorporate some new line roller bearings. And that's what really hurt the last edition CI4 Plus. Um, the second major change, in my opinion, um, is they're now starting to get into the cross woven technology of drag washers. So before it just was just a standard disc. And when you're compressing the two of them together, they had that surface friction upon each other to create that drag pressure. Now they have cross woven fabric in that drag. So now it really grips the next washer that it kind of butts up to. So the drag really didn't change in the form of pounds of pressure, but now they're able to reduce the size of the washers and still keep the same 20 pound class drag that it has. So second big change in this year's Vanford, um, they changed the saltwater corrosive, you know, the corrosive, you know, paint, the body material and all that. So they made the corrosive side a lot better in the Vanford. Um, last major change, in my opinion, is, you know, I, I spoke briefly about the, the, you know, vibration, the wobble and all the sound being taken care of. You know, I think what the biggest change is the micro module to uh, how they're making their gearing connections. Um, I, I'll debate any day, you know, with any person. I, I still to this day think that Shimano makes the best gear in the industry. I think that they always have their, their reels are just so butter smooth. And the reason for it is how they, they really cup that gear design. There's just no, there's, there's no wobble. There's no play. Um, you know, the variants that they, you know, really cut their stuff to it's unparalleled in my opinion. And that micro module two gearing system, it really sets up the Hagani system that they manufacture into the Stratic. It's just, it's just better. And, and those are some of the major, major changes between the CI4 Plus and the new Vanford. 
Okay. So CI four plus you're leaving adios Vanford's coming in. Talk about the just stratic. Now. So we got the stratic FL or dash FL, whatever it is, that's going to be the new stratic. Is that right? The one that has the FL at the end. Yeah, so the FL is the, the new Stratic that came out last year's ICAST, but really made a huge, not, not the one that we just had in July, but 19's ICAST. Yep. Uh, just really hit the industry hard. Um, the, you know, they kept a lot of the same, what Stratic was known for, that lightweight design, powerful reel. But they said, okay, what's going to differentiate the FK, the FL, all the different models of Stratic? And they said, what is our big problem again? It's the bearing. So that's the first thing that they addressed is the bearing on the line roller side. So, you know, with all things considered, yeah, there are some couple of tweaks up and down with, with you know, the Stratic line. They got away from felt washers, got into the carbon fiber drag washers. So if you look at any of your old model Stratics, when you take the spool off, you'll see a whole bunch of fibers kind of underneath the spool of where that kind of dissipated over time, that all felt pattern did. Um, so they got into the carbon fiber stuff, which is where our industry is. But the two most important is the carbon fiber stuff and the enhancements of the bearings itself. Even if you don't know anything about bearings, if someone ever asks you, sir, ma'am, do you want felt versus carbon fiber? Take the carbon fiber. <laughs> So much um, stronger, it dissipates heat better. I mean, it's just a better product. So what, what's the price difference in this now FL Stratic versus this Vanford? Yeah, they're going to be in that 20 to $35 difference in price now. So Stratic they being are, cheaper or less expensive. Yes. I don't want to say cheaper. Yes, that's right. Less expensive than the new Vanford. So I don't, it almost kind of sounds like me, they're back to where they are. They almost kind of have two versions of the Stratic, but I know they're different names, like different, like what, what really changed? Um, now the gearing inside internally with the micro module two system in the Vanford is a superior product than the Stratic. It's just like getting your F-150 with the basic EcoBoost. And then now I want that 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Okay. Good I mean, analogy. There, there is a difference in engine and there is now a difference in gearing. Cool. Good analogy. What, what would you buy personally? Um, to me, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a smorgasbord, you know, the the answer mark is it's both right. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I like the high end stuff, but I also like the stuff that's tried and true. You know, it's hard to beat something that you have confidence in. And, and I take, you know, today's angler, we're so brand loyal. We're, we're just very set in our ways of what we like and what we don't like in product. So, you know, the, the standard Stratic is hard to beat, but the Vanford, it does not, it, it can't be discounted. I mean, it's, it's one of those reels that now will stand on its own platform. Yep. I'm, I'm pumped to get them in the store. I know we have a bunch of them on a, on order here. We'll be in town, ta- definitely in time for, uh, for Christmas and, um, I'm, I'm pumped. I've, uh, I've seen them, held them. They're, uh, they're pretty smooth. Um, gotta love Shimano, even though I know we talk about Daiwa, I still personally buy the Fuego over everything. I feel like it's the best value from all the on the water testing and even dunking these reels in the water, but it's tough to ignore Shimano. Uh, the, I mean, they are, I still have a couple 3000 CI fours and a 4,000 that have been used and abused and they're still smooth. Uh, I have not had the issue, the main major issues with the bearings, uh, but I know a lot of people have, so it's good. Yeah. You know, in Daiwa, you know, now that we kind of segmented into talking about Daiwa a little bit, I still believe that Daiwa makes the best bearing concealment system in our industry. I mean, it's it's hard to dispute the mag seal and the and the the bonuses behind the mag seal products. Um, even their non mag seal products are still one of those scenarios that are just, they're just make great products. And, you know, that's, I think if you were to hang your hat on what is Daiwa known for, I, I think that they are known for that mag sealed component system. Yeah. We did that video uh, showing that you, you got, I oh, guess yeah. it was from the factory. And, and by the way, if you guys are looking and watching Jackson, my little, just turned four this week. He loves fishing reels. He heard us talking about reels. He's home today from school and uh, he wanted to come join us. So Jackson, we're talking about reels, dude. Catch big bass. He likes to catch bass. 
Yeah. So this, oh, this is, is what it. you're talking about. Yeah. So this is that that you know system that you can see where the mag sealed portions. It, it's all that oil has that that nano product in there that is magnetized that will keep the oil to the bearing itself. I mean, it's a, it's such a unique unique concept. Um, so yeah, so we, you can catch some of the videos that we've done on the mag seal component, but you know, when you're talking about salt water and, and water intrusion period, you know, bearings are really the most affected and the quickest to be affected of anything really in any of the reels, you know, the, the way that they make gearing today, you know, I don't know of a manufacturer that, that really makes a bad gear. Um, and, and that's where I think Penn really stepped up their game because they they had some product in the past that was kind of struggling, you know, in the gearing side. But now that they're starting to CNC cut a lot of their product and making it out of better material, um, Penn has now stepped up their game in the gearing side. So I would say that the big four, you know, the Shimano's, the Daiwa's, the Quantum's and the Penn products of the world, they're they're making a gear that's that's very good now. Um, so really, it's it's the bearing side and that's where Daiwa really really shines and i think Daiwa is also ahead of the curve when it comes to body design so that's another big benefit to that you know so it's not you know the the, the reels of old and, and the Daiwa bg is still kind of this way and i'm going to hold up a quantum so you understand but that hard body what i call a hard body frame the traditional aluminum big bulky frame it's kind of getting pushed out um, and, and rightfully so you're cutting out weight and and what Daiwa is going to and a lot of their high-end reels especially and I know that you have some too Joe is they're going to the monocoque frames so it's it's a less waste so this entire gear assembly is mostly gear now so in the certates and the exist that you have um, and a lot of their better product, that monocoque frame is, is the future of, of Daiwa. So those two features are, are where they're really starting to get ahead of the brands. I, oh, sorry, there I had you on mute because mute, uh, yeah. Jackson is asking a lot of good, great questions. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. So for those that are listening and not watching, you had that uh, Daiwa piece there from the manufacturer showing uh, the oil. Uh, kind of describe what's happening there with this mag seal for those that haven't seen it. And why you, you mentioned like why this is obviously important, but I, th I think until one, you see it, uh, it, it kind of ties on together. But why, why is that so important? And why is that kind of their... I guess one of their claims to fame. You know, to, to me, to make it, you know, pretty easy, the way that they're making their magnetic oil, um, I mean, this is, it, it's just amazing, it's the technology that they have built into it. So this magnetic oil that's in the little vial that you can see here, uh, it just reacts to a magnetic charge. And what that does is it creates this little force field around the bearing. So say this little force field is what's protecting the bearing. As that water comes in, it hits this force field so it can't penetrate to that bearing. And as you know, I'm sure that many of us and many of y'all have, you know, torn a reel apart to clean it, to service it. And you see how micro these little bearings are. So there's not a lot of you know, there's not a lot of protection unless it has a system like that to, to create that force field. And the little bit of salt to get that little bit of corrosion starting to build, I mean, it's, it's detrimental to something so finely tuned like a small bearing is. So just to look at it like an umbrella. I'm, I'm, I'm just not allowing that umbrella to get that rain to my face. And especially, so a lot of guides, you know, they're, they're out there every day. They're, they're getting action. They're getting movement on their reels every single day. But for the, you know, the average weekend warrior that might only fish once a month, or maybe it's every other week, if you do have that even minute speck of salt water that's getting in there, and then you don't use it, and it's not you having any action for a month, two months, like that's when all of a sudden you feel, feel it, and you're like, what, what happened? The whole thing feels like it's frozen. It happens so quick. And I've, I've had some that have gone to the graveyard that weren't worth even trying to get fixed uh, because of that. 
just a little bit of salt water gets in and then you let it go for too long and man, it's, it's toast. And I think that's why my Daiwas have held up really, really, really well. Now, in terms of Daiwa, since we're kind of going down by brand, did they make any changes to the names? I know they're, they're keeping obviously the Fuego. Did they make any changes there or the BG? Uh, so nothing on the Fuego. The BG kind of got a split in the road a little bit. So Daiwa is keeping their standard BG that the market knows extremely well. One of our most popular selling reels alongside with the Fuego. Um, BG is just that hard body. It's that aluminum. It's that strength. Um, I kind of, you know, whenever I tell people, you know, why Fuego, why BG, um, to me, the Fuego is I'm going to have a great reel for an artificial style scenario. And I'm going to use my BG for my cut bait, my live bait scenario, something that takes a lot of pressure. So that's kind of like my one, two tandem setup. So what they've done with the BG is now they've split that line up. So the BGs, what we have always known that product to be is a black gold. You know, that's the, the kind of the name of BG. It's a black gold concept. There you oh, go. Right here. This is the, the big boy, the 45. I know there's a bigger version, but the 4,500 to me, that is like all I need for big live bait fishing. Yeah, and most people don't realize how powerful that 4500 is. I mean, you can tarpon fish, shark fish, you can do so many things with that reel. Well, this is the one that Luke, you know, we were down in the Keys and old Hollywood loves his his BGs. And we've caught, we get what that 120 pound tarpon in like 13 minutes on this. A lot of people think, oh, you got to have at least a 6,000 when you start doing 100 plus pound tarpon. And then that hammerhead, dude, that was like an eight and a half foot hammerhead and landed with this this 4500 yeah. and uh and a, obviously a, a heavy rod but man like it was shocking how well this thing did i was like well, why would you need anything bigger than a 4500 bg this is like having a 6000 anything else uh maybe yeah, and, go for it and that's one of my my downsides to the Daiwa product you know their nomenclature hasn't really matched our industry well so your 4500 is kind of the same size of what other companies 6000s are and that's one of the big changes that Daiwa has made for 2020 and moving forward is now their sizing is now going to match what the industry sizing is and Joe, you, you hung up, you know, you, you showed the standard BG. So I said that there was a fork in the road. This is the new Daiwa BG MQ. And what Daiwa has decided to do is let the original BG stand on its own. But now we need a big game reel, something that's lightweight that we can fish on the near shore and offshore platform that that really matches today's performance with offshore rods and that's what the bgmq is so now you have the bg black gold and the bgmq which is the monocoque frame big game reel is the difference now in this all right one. if 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 there's someone from Daiwa listening, call us next time. See, now you got BG for black gold and BG for big game. Uh, we could have come up with something creative for you. That's uh, right. But I love it. That's uh, that's so that didn't look. That was a five thousand. What was that? This is a five thousand. It is so tiny. It looks it looks a lot smaller than the forty five I'm holding. Yeah, that's right. And that's one of those changes that I told you that Daiwa was making is now they're starting to get to the standard nomenclature of our industry. And, and what I did is I got a Quantum Cabo 5000 and a BGMQ 5000. So now you start to see a lot of similarity and, and parallel sizing with the industry. Yep. So again, Daiwa was listening to their customers um, so when you're buying a BG, your standard black gold from our website, you know, what I would consider a traditional 4,000 size reel across the industry is really their 3,500. Okay. So they just make their reels a little bigger. So just keep that in mind. If you want a 4,000 standard BG, get the 3,500. Okay. Although it is cool to say that you land a uh, 125 pound tarpon on a 4,500 series reel. 
Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Minutes. Uh, interesting. All right. So what else with Daiwa? I thought they had one other change. No, anything, some, some new spinning reel, right? So they have a lot of new releases. The Procyon ALs have come out. So it's an aluminum version of a product that has done, you know, extremely well for them. Um, that's kind of that price point um, between the Fuego BG market and the ballistic market. So it's in that mid 140, I mean, excuse me, 150 to 179 category. Don't quote me on price, but I'm wanting to say it's about that 170-ish price point. Um, to me, um, I don't see a lot of advantage there with the Procyon because of what you get at the next level being the ballistic. I, you know, our premises, I want to put the best products made by Daiwa in our Salt Strong Insider's hands, okay? What can I hang my hat on? What do I have the confidence in? And that's that mag sealed product. Um, although BG is not a max sold product, the way that they make the BG, the way that they make the BG MQ, um, it, it, it just is sealed to the to the point to where you still don't have water intrusion, but you don't have the barrier that protects it against that really hard submersion of product. So, um, but Daiwa, you know, we kept things you know stupid simple. You know, it's it's the Fuego, the BG at the lower end spectrum because it, it's in my opinion probably the best at the price point level that there is. Um, and then at some of the higher end levels, now you have your ballistic, your certates and exist. Um, they all offer something unique and that's the higher that you go, um, the more bearings, the lighter it becomes, you know, it's, it's, you're paying for the performance of better product. How, how important are, and I, we can talk about all kinds of things with reels, but I know bearings comes up quite a bit and I even see it. I'm holding this one. I think it was somewhere here, you know, has seven bearings. Yeah. Uh, talk about that in terms of the, the amount of bearings. Are, are there know, any companies that try to use that as marketing when it's maybe not as important or is it always important or is it more important on uh, something else on how it's in case and stuff? You know, that's, it's a multi faceted answer. I mean, <laughs> if you look at some of the old reels, Joe, that, that even precede you and I, you know, some of the old Garcias back in the day, some of the old, old reels, bearing was never even talked about, you right. know. Some it of them are still working like, today, 50 years later. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, some of those direct drive to even two, three, four ball bearing reels outlast today's 10, 12, 15 bearing reels. Um, again, the industry is building stuff so tight in tolerance Anytime they add quantity of bearing, for instance, you're adding more capability of corrosion. So the higher the bearing count, um, you 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 kind of open that Pandora's box. But I think what's most important about bearings for consumers to understand is where they put bearings. Okay, everyone knows that you know every manufacturer kind of has a line roller bearing to to let this little idler wheel let the line come off. But some people, some manufacturers have bearings at the pinion and gear level. Some have it at the oscillation shaft level. To me, what you want bearings to do is you want the bearings to support the most you know functional part of a reel. And in my opinion, that's the shaft because that's where most things start to break down at the engineering level is when the shaft doesn't have the right, you know, secured structure on both sides. If it only has bearings on one side, now you have all that perimeter weight being able to pull down the shaft. That's where you get into some of that bent shaft. And now the reel gets tight and people think, oh, my bearings gone bad. I got a gear problem. Well, no, it's actually your shaft is bent because it wasn't supported properly. So I think what's most important about bearings, it's how it supports the internal components, not necessarily how many bearings are in the rail. That's good. That's how you end up getting shafted, right? <laughs> you shafted, get shafted on that reel. Cool. All right, let's move on to pen because I know we want to hit a pen and quantum, which seem to be the top selling ones, at least in, in our store and probably nationwide in, in general for inshore saltwater fishing. So what did Penn do? I know they made some changes and I saw some new colors by Penn. What, yeah, what yeah, all did old so, Penn do? 
Yeah, they've, they've done a lot of great changes. You know, Penn's kind of really known for their spin fisher. You know, it's kind of like their, you know, model of models. That's They're going to start with that and then change everything to go off of that model. So that model kind of stayed the same. Um, they have long cast versions for my surf guys that, that need the capacity. We actually have those in the shop now. Um, but what Penn, I think, really started to do is they follow the Shimano concept. I have to have a model every $10 increment to make sure that I never lose a sale. So now they have something every $10, um, but they really started to incorporate color and they started to incorporate a lot of better changes into internal components. So where Penn used to be with, with their gear, a lot of the stuff back then was a casted product. So they poured it into a mold, they casted a gear, and it just was not really holding up to, you know, the, the inshore capacities that we need for strength. So now Penn has really started to CNC cut a lot of their products now with better starting components. Um, so you still see good quality components all the way up to brass componentry in some of their reels made of really hard product, but now CNC cut. And the, the benefit to that is now you start having tighter tolerances. There's no slop in the gearing to pinion setup anymore than what pin used to have. So another major, major change with them. Um, to me, I thought pin was 10 years behind the aesthetics of what our industry is asking for in product. They were kind of old school, traditional look feel. Uh, now they're starting to make the body smaller. They're starting to make the reels lighter. Um, so a lot of big changes with pin this year. What was it on the battle that they made the color change to? What was the one they did that was just for, um, for like some distribution line? Was that it? Yeah. So the battle was, they have a, a small box retail only platform, uh, which is an all silver, you know, kind of a grayish, That's right. That's you know, right. yeah, bare, you know, bare aluminum color. Uh, but the traditional battle that's always been out on the market is the black. Um, and that actually, if, if, my email is correct. That is actually landing at our shop this week. So the brand new battle three will be at our, at our shop pretty soon. Cool. And that's fishstrong.com, everybody. Fishstrong.com. Insiders get 20% off. Woohoo! One more. I saw a couple like $800,000 orders coming in here uh, recently. Uh, you know, one more reason to, to join the Insider Club, 20% off that order. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of dough. Yeah, I was looking at one recently, a $634 order. It was two bull bay rods, two reels. You know, when you start looking at that that concept, you know, $500, I'm saving 20%. Boom, there's your $100 membership, you know. So the savings are, it's it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. If you, if you guys are wondering, like, hey, how, how do they do that? And why doesn't everyone do it? Well, we're, we're, a, we're a membership company. I mean, that's the whole point of, of our club is, one, to teach you where to go fish. We do that every week. We have all kinds of intel based on like real science and trends to show you where to go fish. And then we teach you what you need to use, like basically what's the best value to go catch those fish. And of course, how to retrieve it and all the, the how-to stuff that comes up with it. And this is stuff that you can't find out there on YouTube. So uh, we have 20% off really the lowest price you see out there anyways. It's not like some inflated price. Some people think, oh, it must inflate it. No, I mean, it's, it's 20% off the same price you would find anywhere else in the, in the country. And then uh, it's boom, it's yours. You ship it to you. Usually same day now. I mean, Carol and Corey and that crew, man, they're uh, incredible. I mean, I saw we have hundreds of orders coming in a day and they're just getting them out same day. It's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. So, incredible. You know, and, and, you know, to keep, you know, talking about the pin side, you know, pin can get you in the weeds quickly. I mean, they have, there's 7,000 models in pin, yep. you know, we wanted to keep it basic, you know, kind of our concept is give me the best reel for this particular category of product. So for us, that under hundred dollar platform was the fierce three. So we have those coming in. So the fierce three is that under hundred, um, that $100 concept, the 130 concept, that's the brand new battle three. Uh, we have the spin fishers that kind of are in that mid to high $100 market. And then the high end market is covered with the pin slammer three. So those are the four pros, you know, the products that we're moving forward with. 
you know, I know a lot of guys like to fish the conflict twos, the, the, the new clashes that have just come out, you know, to me with pen is I want to see it work first. Okay. And, and, and let the industry beat it up, bang it up, fish it hard. And then if it's still in the angler's mouth, Mark, we need to get this product, then we'll look into it. But Penn has kind of always been that process over time to where they like to put something out there nice and shiny and fancy. And sometimes they've had to work through a couple of bugs. And, and it's not just Penn, but I just want to make sure that Penn and what they have released in some of the newer offerings is on point to the predecessor. Yep. Okay. And that's how we run our whole shop too. Not, not, not picking on pin or anyone. We, we want sure. to test this stuff out. We want to hear feedback from not just our insiders and our audience, but just nationwide. It, it, the, it's, it's still a small industry in the big scheme of things. And you hear real quickly uh, when some certain product is having an issue, whether it be rod reel, et cetera. And now, like you said, it, it's part of, it's part of life. It's part of any kind of manufacturing uh, but that is a reason that we don't just put the new shiny object up on our store right away. We go test the stuff out. We want to make sure you're getting the best value. We want to make sure anything that our members, and even if you're not a member and you're buying from our shop, which you're obviously allowed to, you just pay the normal price. We want to make sure you're getting the absolute best value, the best product for that scenario. So, all right, that's Penn. Anything else before we move on to Quantum? No, no. Okay. So what about Quantum? Quantum's one. Another one, quantum guys, marketing people. You want some help? Call us. We love we love to help you. They're they're great reels. Like I, I always kind of, I, I guess here's a good analogy. They're kind of like the Suzukis in the in the motors, right? Suzukis like the commercial guys love Suzukis. They're probably some of the longer lasting ones. They're they're great engines, but they don't have the marketing in like the pizzazz and and just you know. And, and you know what I'm talking about just that sex sex appeal that a Yamaha and like Mercury has. Uh, rarely do you see you know a boat with trips with you know three Suzukis right or quads right. It's always Mercury or Yamaha or you know it's it's there's something there that they've missed. Same with Evan Rude right. Evan Rude just did a poor job. Now they're not even around. They did a poor job on the marketing. Just being honest. And and I hate it for me because those are both you know they're great engines. Our dad has an Evan Rude still and it, it's great. Uh, Suzuki's are great. I feel like Quantum's in the same boat and, and not to bash Quantum, but they're great. Like we have Quantum's and like, holy smokes, these are really good reels. They're lasting forever. Why isn't anyone talking about them? You hit it right on the head, Joe. They, they're just not that sexy pick. They do, in my opinion, a very poor job when it comes to marketing their product and their product is legit. I have fished the quantum smoke in shores and the cabos for years and they just don't have the market presence that they truly deserve you know and you mentioned you know the suzuki's in the engines and why the commercial guys love them one of the reasons why they love them is because they come with the best warranty well that's quantum you know when you buy a brand new quantum smoke in shore or anything like that they're they're putting a warranty on these things up to five years. Yeah. You know, you would never see a five-year warranty in a Shimano and Daiwa product ever, 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 what, ever. What do they have in, in general, Shimano and Daiwa? One year. One, okay. And, and, my, unless and you're doing like the exist or some of these really, you know, $600 ones, it's a little bit different, but yeah. Yeah, a little bit different, but I mean, as far as an overall blanket of coverage, you know, most companies are a year. You know, so is that really a testament to, to how well Quantum feels that their reel is? You know, to me, you know, if I'm going to stamp, I'm going to give you five years, you know, that, that's, that says a lot. That holds a lot of weight. Yep. Um, you know, another really unique thing that, that I fell in love with on the Quantum side is, you know, if you go to their website, they have a, a segment in there that shows you how they actually test the strength of their product. They have machines that do nothing but flip the bale over on the reel thousands of times a day to simulate Joe out there fishing with his brother, you know, casting a thousand times a day. So they have a machine that does nothing but flip the bale over and over and over again. They have a machine that does nothing but peel drag, peel the line off of a reel. You know, they torture these reels. And I'm telling you, I, I, I would love it if the people listening would 
watch these videos. I mean, you'll be blown away with the quality that they're actually putting in the product today. Yep. Or if quantum run, run at, cause most people don't even know what you just said. If quantum just ran ads to those videos, right? Uh, I mean, that that's like aha moment because I, I feel like they don't get the love they deserve. This smoke and Luke's had a Cabo that that was uh, Luke's got like a I don't know if they still make them anymore. I want to say it was an 8000 Cabo. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, Cabo's uh, huge. yeah, that's that's been his like big tarpon reel forever. I mean, I'm talking before we even had salt trunks, they're probably six years old. And that thing still after a lot of use and abuse is still ki uh, killing it. Um, but the smoke, man very very impressed i mean everything is it's actually super light it's smooth uh i'm i'm very very impressed it was kind of one of those like man i can't believe no one is talking about this i still personally me personally i'm still die with fuego is kind of my go-to especially after the discount with the incident i mean i'm paying 80 dollars, dude wife's happy i'm happy i got good stuff um how much is like the smoke now it's it's more uh, they're, they're family priced at 189.99 okay got it and so after so, the discount you're it's still better discount you're in the 150 yeah you're in the 150 market you know but but look collectively though you know what what does every player in the industry do you know they say okay what's the number one reel in our business okay the strategy okay okay if i'm going to hit them in the nose i need to compete against their number one and that's what Quantum did with the smoke. They said, what do we like about the Stratic? What don't we like about the Stratic? And that's why the Quantum side, they made a better bearing. So they have better bearings, in my opinion, than Shimano. And they have a much stronger gear and drag system than Shimano. So that's kind of what Quantum said. I'm going to change these things. I've listened to the consumer. I know what they don't like. And I'm going to make it to something that they do. It's just they're not as good with the deliverable with marketing, you know. But if you were to put the two side by side, listen, I'll put a I'll put a smoke against a Stratic every day of the week, and not even think twice. And it's less money. Stratic FL, Stratic CI four, or Vanford. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, yeah, now now everyone who's been trying to like like you said, kind of emulate. The Stratic is now they're all like having to go back to the whiteboards and say, all right, we can't call it the CI4 anymore. We got to call it the Vanford or the FL. Uh, that's so funny. Cool. That's yeah. that's helpful. Uh, but Quantum has how many different lines do they have? They don't have it like pin where it's every, you know, 10 to 15 bucks, but they do have some. Yeah. You know, what Quantum is really, really known for, in my opinion, is two very distinctive reels. The inshore smoke, which is my, my inshore category of product covered, and then the nearshore and offshore stuff being the Cabo. So that's kind of my one-two scenario inside the Quantum line. Now, they do make other products, but to me, yeah, I would do my insiders a disservice by not telling them what's in it for them as an angler. And I think that those two reels best serve our needs for, for our customers. Yeah. And we'll have, we'll have to do, this has been fun. We'll have to do a separate, and we, we are going to talk about returns and repairs too, because I want to touch on that, but we'll have to do a whole separate podcast on, you know, kind of some miscellaneous brands, um, you know, Florida fishing products, Tsunami, like some of these other ones that we have in there accurate and, uh, and also like do one on really high end and even low end. I mean, cause you got, you know, the van stalls and you got the, the, review i just did recently with the exist there's a um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different versions of of this podcast we can do we wanted to do one just kind of in general uh because i think this is what 80 percent of, of 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 the weekend warriors especially and, and even even a lot of full-time guys are buying a lot of these people who just want great value who want to get a lot of use out of it and have some good longevity um so speaking of all that mark you 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 were in a a, a, a i won't you can name the place if you want to but a, a tackle store where you're in there every day, we're talking millions of dollars coming in, in that place every year. So you're getting to see a lot of reels being sold. And that also means you guys are not really responsible per se, but you're hearing about the returns and having to deal with the manufacturer. It, it, any thoughts on that in, in terms of different brands or lines that you saw uh, maybe either getting returned more often, or maybe the customer service was just amazing. Like, Hey, it turned around in a week. Uh, what are your thoughts on all that? Cause that's, that, that's kind of the next step too, right? Even like with Daiwa, um, 
it's cool that I have lifetime guarantee on that thing on that exist that I paid $800 for, or, you know, a little bit less because of, uh, of the discount, but it's also like, all right, is it going to take me a month to get my reel back? Uh, so overall trends on returns and repair and who's best, who's the worst, uh, just from your experience, not to throw anyone underneath the bus. Um, I, I'm going to address this in two kind of segments. The first segment is what you're starting to see a lot of manufacturers do is they want products to either return to their facility or a facility that they have signed off on and given them the credential of being a factory service center. Because what they're seeing is when they take it to a mom and pop shop or, hey, my buddy knows how to do it kind of thing. What they're seeing is those individuals and those companies are putting the reel back together incorrectly, number one. Mm -hmm. um, or they're not putting the internal structure uh, the way that the manufacturer requires it with the proper grease and the proper oil. OK, so just because there's a million different greases and oils that are out there, it doesn't mean that the manufacturer wants that in their reel. OK, and, you know, talking about Dio, for instance, what makes the Dio so incredibly awesome is the magnetic oil. Well, when you put a different kind of oil in there that's not magnetic, well, now you just kill the whole reason why that reel is so incredible to begin with. Yep. OK, so it really is the manufacturers are starting to tighten that a little bit. So if you look on Daiwa site, Shimano site, any of the major manufacturers, you'll see like in our state, in the state of Florida, you know, there might be three to five different factory. I'm going to let them do this, you know, this repair. Okay. So keep that in mind that that's part of the problem. Um, the other problem that I saw the majority of the issues with were bearings. I, I very, very seldom, you know, seldomly ever saw a gear problem. It might be one in a thousand reels, okay? Um, I saw more bent shafts and drag problems. Both of those were just far above what the gear problems ever were. OK, and, and I'll tell you why the drag is a problem. The typical angler, they crank that drag down so tight and they fish it out of the tolerance of what the manufacturer called it to be. So when someone says, Mark, my Daiwa Fuego is flexing. OK, well, it's flexing because you cranked it up to 30 pounds of drag. OK, if, if, if the individuals, if the anglers would fish the product for what it's designed to be and fish it with, you know, five pounds to 15 pounds of drag, you're not going to hurt components like a frame of the reel, a drag washer. You're not going to hurt these things. And I think that's where one of the mistakes is. So whenever we're replacing drag washers and that's with every brand, OK, it's because they they had that immediate i need to get that fish in from point a to point b and i want to hold it up for a picture well you're just you're killing your reel yeah and, and you should uh, never we talk about that in the fuego right people have said you know although i don't like the fuego because it you know it it doesn't have enough drag or the drag doesn't support and you're seeing flex and if you're using 10 pound braid which is what you should be using on a normal inshore which is what this topic is about 10 pound braid, you, you never in a million years would need 18 to 25 pounds of drag ever. It's impossible uh, if you're really fishing it right. So I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. So again, it's an angling aptitude thing. You know, I think the more education that they receive, most individuals don't realize how much pressure 10 pounds of drag truly is. I mean, it's an incredible amount of weight. Yep. Okay. So that is, side you know one of the biggest things you know with the shaft you know imagine this spool you know completely oscillated at its furthest point you know if the drag is too tight that that shaft has the capability because of that perimeter weight being so far away from the body itself that's where the bent shaft comes into play okay because you have so much drag put into this reel you know that that's one of the the major concerns about the shafts you know going going bad but i would say as a percentile 
70% of the reels that have a problem are bearing related. Mm. And, that, and that's a huge number. And as far as brands go, and I'm not, I'm not going to smash brands, um, but you know, Stratix, the Shimano's of the world seem to come into the shop more often, but is it because they're also more sold? Okay. You know, if I'm going to sell 10,000 Stratix versus a thousand Fuegos, well, I expect to see more Stratix. Okay. So although I saw more Stratix coming in for repair, um, it, it, that also could be a number thing. Okay. Um, so it was normally bearing related. That's helpful. Um, and so I'm guessing probably because one, they have a great warranty and they're well-made and they don't sell as well. Quantum probably had the fewest amount just in terms of numbers, but percentage wise, uh, he, and for those yeah. of you listening, Mark is saying, yes, uh, he's nodding his head. Um, but percentage wise, no one, you didn't really calculate that. You know, to, to us, it, it we, we didn't really have the statistics to say it's, it's we're seeing a, a major problem with this reel. Uh, we did it really based on brand. Um, it, it just seemed like number one was a Shimano product, number two, a Daiwa product. But you also are, you know, I, I don't want to skew that and saying because those are the two most popular selling brands. Yep. So there's more on the water. But we just, we never really saw a lot of Quantums come back. You know, we never really saw, you know, some of their high end stuff. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many. I mean, it's it, it was just so few. What about you know, pen? Um, we saw quite a bit of pen. Okay. We saw quite a bit of pen. And, and pen, you know, statistically speaking, at my at my old place, um, they were number three or four on the totem pole when it came to sales. So it wasn't a numbers thing with them because they were kind of further down the totem pole with what consumers wanted. Mm. So, um, but again, pen has changed a lot and they, they needed to, they, they addressed it because they saw the problem as well. Yep. Cool, man. Well, anything else before we, uh, we close it up and I, I'd love to hear from anyone who made it this far. What do you guys want us to do next on this? Do you want us to go high end, super low end, like, you know, best reels for kids and newbies, uh, or some hybrid, you know, we're, we're, we got just kind of miscellaneous uh, reels out there for certain certain uh, scenarios. So let me know my email, joe at saltstrong.com, J-O-E at saltstrong.com. Make it this far. You can email me and I, I will read it. I might not get back to you right away, but I definitely will, will get it and we'll uh, run it by the team. So anything else, Mr. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? I would like to do something in the future, you know, with Van Stahl, with Tsunami, with Accurate, some of those higher end reels and explain the differences between submersible product and sealed products. Ooh, I like that. So that's a, that's a big thing, a big misconception. Well, it's sealed. Why am I having problems? Sealed and submersible are two very, very different things. And that's something that I think we can address um, and now that we're starting to get more and more product into the store, you know, we, we mentioned Accurate earlier, another one of those brands that will be in our storefront pretty soon. Um, you know, some of the differences between the small conventional market that people use for insure as well. I love it. Cool. I wrote that one down. We're definitely going to do that one. So you guys let us know. And uh, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. It, it, Definitely give us a thumbs up, a like. It helps out big time. And then subscribe to us on whatever podcast platform you are listening on, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, et cetera. That helps us out huge to get found and to rank in the algorithms. So guys, we appreciate you. We love you. If you're not an Insider member, join today. Check us out. Find out why we now, I think we're at 17,000. I saw members uh, getting right there at 17,000 members. You know, for really from Texas to really New Jersey now. Uh, that, that want to go out there and, and maximize their time and save money on all of their tackle and not just all their tackle, the best tackle, right? We, we don't, we'll never be uh, a Bass Pro. We, we want to, we want to beat Bass Pro, but we're going to beat them a different way. You can't beat Bass Pro on SKUs, you know, meaning SKUs is the amount of different variations they have on every product. They might have a million for all I know in, in the saltwater or really in the fishing industry. We're going to have a whole lot less, kind of like uh, what some other smart companies do. And, and we're just going to have the best out there, just all on value, all in what really works. 
no sponsors, none of the fluff out there. We truly just want to go out there, put the stuff. We, we buy it with our own money. We go out there with our own hard-earned money. This was bought with my own real money here on this 4,500 BG that I'm holding. And we, a lot of times, one of the first things we do, which is painful to watch, is we dip some of this stuff in salt water. Luke just got a couple of those new pliers. The first thing he did is throw them in the water. Uh, let's see how they do. Uh, that's called putting into the test. We need to get one of those machines like Quantum has where it's constantly flipping the bail back and forth. I'll tell you, they're incredible. Otherwise, if we have, I, I'm envisioning like having Corey do it and he's gonna like have carpal tunnel and won't be able to do anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> cool, buddy. Well, this is fun. This is really helpful. This helped me out. Um, I know we're getting a lot of questions now that we're hitting the holidays and a lot of these new models are available on fishstrong.com. A lot of people are asking, all right, what's this Vanford? What's going on here? So that was super helpful. If you guys have any questions, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Either my email or fish, F-I-S-H, at saltstrong.com. We'll go to all of us. That's fish at saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we will talk to you on the next episode. Peace. We out. Thanks, Mark. All right, bud. Peace.